guys. Uh, so today I want to share with you the internet weather. Um, we're going to start with our top 10 most pro ports report. Um, and this is basically our way to understand the scanning activity that's going on on the internet. We look at it in different perspectives, uh, but this perspective is how much scanning is happening on specific ports by volume. Um, so this week, I don't know if it's fortunate or unfortunate, nothing really stood out to me uh, as a new port. Uh, that we've never seen before. So I decided to cover ports that we haven't covered in a while, port 23 and port 445 uh, TCP. So um, first, let's take a look at port 23 TCP and the activity going on on it. So this is activity over the last 900 days. So here in the top, I'm graphing the volume of scanning activity. You could see that three years ago, there were actually some pretty significant peaks uh, but today, the activity has kind of leveled out. And on the bottom, you have the thousands of IP addresses um, that are scanning or that are partaking in this activity. So um, you could see, again, three years ago, uh, there was a lot more of the IP addresses scanning. Uh, but over time here, even within the last year, uh, the activity has been like, you know, in about 50,000 IP addresses per hour or something like that as opposed to, you know, here in 2018, where it's, uh, I guess, way more, like 150,000, three times more. So, you know, my claim to fame is to take all these scanners and figure out, like, where are they coming from? Yeah. So I did a geographical mapping of all mm. of the IP addresses. And I think the best way to caption this chart here is to say, the internet is calling and it wants you to turn off uh, port 23 TCP <laughs> telnet. <laughs> because that's literally everywhere. Every place that has internet, I yeah. think, is basically lit up on this chart, and, and it's really showing you um, how widespread. You yeah, know, I mean, I guess 900 days, right? Over 900 days. Uh, so I actually took the last 24 hours of scanning activity, oh, wow. which was about 100,000 different IP addresses um, in that 24-hour period that are scanning. But you could see, I mean, you could pretty much see where internet exists in the world yeah. uh, and maybe where it doesn't. Um, the areas that are uh, mostly unlit are either in like large you know, deserts or uh, places where people don't reside or maybe don't have access to some of the like, things like the internet. Um, so yeah, I think this chart kind of speaks for itself. You know, this is very um, uh, loud scanning within seconds of connecting your router uh, or your modem to the internet, um, you're going to be getting scanned on this port. So really make sure that as much as possible never to allow Telnet or anything to really reside over this port because somebody's going to come knocking. What would have been interesting um, is to go back. You went back 900 days, which took you back to August-ish of 2017. It would have been interesting to go back another year I know it would have been a lot of turning to work through that much data, but because Mirai really kicked off in August of 2016, it would have been interesting to compare the baseline before Mirai first kicked off to the, what is now the background noise, which is still relatively high level of scanning there. That's a very good point, Jim. You know, I'll, I'm going to have to do that for the next time. I don't know why I picked 900. That was just like a, <laughs> a very round number. But you're right. Uh, that would have actually given us a much better baseline. But the, the, you know, the, nowadays, the baseline, the background noise, we're stuck with. I mean, I think this next chart you have is going to show that, right? The next chart is actually port 445 TCP. Ah, so more so WannaCry. So port 445 TCP is WannaCry. You guys know. Uh, that I've been doing something special. So with 445 TCP, we had a baseline, which was about 10,000 IP addresses, which was the old, uh, I already forget uh, which worm uh, it was. Uh, Conficker. 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 But clearly it doesn't matter anymore because now we have the new worm called WannaCry. Right. Um, and every time I showed this chart, I always remember this peak right here in 2017, which was about August timeframe because that's the weekend that probably every incident responder who works in cybersecurity got called in and was like, hey, there's this crazy exploit, there's patch, are we patched? It's worming. It's, it's worming, yeah, what are we doing? 
And if you could zoom in, I know you can't see it now, but if you could zoom in, there was a, a colossal, like a drop, like the activity had just stopped. And then when nobody was paying attention, basically over the years, the activity started creeping back up. So what can we do uh, right now? Well, this threat is out there. It's spreading. There are a lot of infected machines. You know, some of them are going to be coming online and offline. It's people going to be deploying, um, you know, some of these devices that are vulnerable to this. Uh, but what can we do? We can track it. We can see is the activity getting better or worse. So I've been doing it every time I'm on um, th uh, uh, doing the internet weather. Um, so here we see, I guess the last time, the first time I did this was in April. Uh, you could see the activity was going down and then the activity stayed the same and then went down and went down, kept going down, stayed the same, kind of had a little bump. So uh, here's another bump. So I guess my question to you, this is what I've been asking all my guests, is what do you think uh, is going to happen next? Is the activity going to go down, stay the same, or go up? Um, and it could be a trick question no, because... No, uh, trick question. <laughs> I, well, it's a good trick question because I feel like you can't really fail at it. Like I feel, I feel like, like any answer you give is going to be the right answer. I feel like I'm on with Markley. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm going to say it went it continued to go down and played right. safe. That's a good, that's a safe bet. Yeah. Um, Dan, what do you think? I, I think long term it's going to level out. Um, short term it may drop a little before it levels out, but I think long term it's going to level out here at some still ridiculously high floor now. Some, you know, the new normal is way too much. Yeah, there's th tens of thousands of IP addresses scanning. Well, uh, the trick is it went up and down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but ultimately, it went down, actually. You could have also said stayed the same because it approximately stayed the same. High five, Jim. We, uh, Jim, I think, is onto something that it's going to eventually level out. And we're kind of seeing that here. Actually, if you look at the past few months, there's a slight downturn, but it's really le leveling out. It's like that long tail. Uh, that eventually goes down to, uh, well, like you said, a ridiculously <laughs> yeah. high baseline. Um, so that's what we have for uh, the probes report. So even though uh, I didn't see anything super exciting in the top 10, you could still see there's a lot of scanning activity and definitely something for us to learn and be aware of and make sure we're protecting. So next, I want to kind of pivot to a different way to look at the scanning data. And that's by looking at the volume by most sources probing. So most sources probing generally means a lot of IP addresses at the same time are doing scanning. And generally it means there's a botnet in play. Um, and those are of course important to, uh, to, for us to track. Um, so the two ports that jumped out at me, even though we've covered them in the past, um, are 8291 TCP and 8728 TCP. And I think the reason it's important to cover them and it's what I learned while covering them is they're actually related to the same thing. Oh. So uh, the next chart should make that be semi-apparent. So I took a look at uh, both of them superimposed together and you could see um, the red here, I believe is 8291 TCP. Um, and you could see that activity, both by volume and number of IP addresses, has been high, whereas the blue you can barely see, which would be eight, port 8728. Eight. Uh, but starting in, what is that, sometime July uh, or June of um, 2019, uh, so just a few months ago here, you could see that the blue and the red are in concert together. When one goes up, so does the other. Um, so I took a look at the last 24 hours of IP addresses scanning on both ports. And there's about 16,000 in each category, but 14, almost 15,000 of them, I think, or 14,000 of them overlap. Mm. So claim to fame, let's map them out geographically. And I think here the, war, the internet is also telling us uh, to not have these ports exposed because uh, there's a lot of scanning. But you could see, whereas in the first chart, there was basically scanning from everywhere, here there are geographical areas where uh, the scanning uh, is a lot louder in some regions. For example, just to highlight a few, you know, you see India, you see Thailand over there, Southeast Asia, Brazil, 
um, a lot of Central America you could see. Um, and of course, uh, Europe, North Africa, Middle East over there, you know, lots of scanning emanating from that area. Not so much, I would say, from North America, though. Yeah. Uh, so whatever this threat is, it's obviously uh, much more pronounced internationally, I would say, than, um, let's say, in our region of the world here. So would you would you make the inference that the U.S. might be the target based on this? No, I think what I would say is that whatever the botnet consists of, the devices that it consists of, it's probably devices that are more mm. predominant in those other regions. Right. They are more vulnerable out there, and they've just happened to become infected. Whereas maybe that type of device is not prevalent here in the, uh, let's say, the US or North America. Although you could see, I mean, there are definitely hotspots right. where devices like that are used. They seem to be much in much more use um, out there in the world. Um, so you might ask yourself, like, what is this? Because this is what we ask ourselves. like. What are these devices and what are they looking for? Um, so, uh, looking at some honeypot data, oh I kind of came across uh, this port and this type of information, this uh, login thing, which caused me to start basically using my favorite search engine to start looking for this network pattern. Somehow, I came up on this tool, which is MK Brutus, which is a tool uh, basically written to brute force passwords for MicroTik routers. It's wow. a tool written in Python. Um, so you can give it a list of all the passwords you have in your nice password list, including uh, admin, admin, and admin password probably. Right. And um, try it against these different uh, interfaces. So um, a MicroTik router has many interfaces to manage uh, to manage it, really. So there's Telnet, which we talked about, port 23, SSH, port 22, also a heavy scanner. Uh, but here, uniquely, you have Winbox um, and this uh, API. So 8728 is the API port. You can do different management functions, maybe, uh, with the router. Maybe you can get some information about it. Maybe you can put it into certain states. They also have HTTP, which we see a lot of scanning for that, looking for routers as well. Long story short, I was able to relate that both of these ports, actually, are related to the same type of product, which is a, a MicroTik router running router OS. And um, I even found inside of the tool the exact line of code uh, that would generate a packet like this um, that we can observe in uh, different sensor logs uh, that we have access to. Um, so what is this? This is basically devices that are looking for vulnerabilities um, in MicroTik routers. Um, these devices themselves, I took about 10 different ones. Um, and used Shodan to just search them around. I, I picked random IP addresses. And there didn't seem to be, I would say, a rhyme or reason for the IP addresses. Suffice it to say, they're probably themselves routers, like MicroTik routers or DVR or botnets. They might be part of Mirai or something similar. Um, so a lot of this, uh, you know, whoever is looking for this uh, has a botnet of compromised devices and is probably looking to extend that botnet by adding um, you know, uh, these MicroTik devices to it. And perhaps they're trying to use um, a username and password um, uh, for that. Uh, one important thing about MicroTik is, uh, it didn't come from the internet weather, is that we do see um, a, some adversaries actually utilizing compromised MicroTik routers for their own C2 infrastructure. Uh, command and control infrastructure. Um, so it's important for everyone if you're if you're using a MicroTik router or any other kind of like small office, home office router um, between your different business locations, you have to make sure that you secure it and you don't expose uh, these management ports on the internet side. You want to make sure they're only available on the local LAN side and not on the WAN side of the of the router. Otherwise something like this could happen to you. And just to be safe, even if you don't know how to do that, make sure you change at least the passwords. Uh, you know, at least make sure that it's not an easy to guess password. It's very complicated. This might be, I'm not saying you should do this, but you know, if you have to make a random password that you don't want to forget, maybe just glue it to the bottom of your router. Because the, uh, the attack vector here is a little bit different. You know, I, I don't want people to write down their passwords on a piece of paper, but it's almost better to do that 
in this situation, then, then you, you have a default password. Then to, leave the default, uh, yeah. then to leave the default, because the attack surface is different. Here, people are coming for, at you from a totally different. You know, it's not going to well, be. Well, and if if someone breaks into your house and looks at the bottom of your router, you've got bigger problems. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You've got bigger problems. You should be looking exactly. for something else there. We consistently see Microtik router being targeted for vulnerabilities, and it's something that really resonates because I feel like something like that is so prominent in the scanning that uh, you would expect something to be done to tailor that activity. Top 10 might change week to week, but there's always somebody out there looking for some vulnerability. Maybe it's not port 23, maybe it's not port 445, maybe it's a new vulnerability in, let's say, microtech devices. Uh, somebody always is looking for something. So.